Hey guys, it's TTL back with another rush kit for you. Today we're going to be taking a look at my first X299 white motherboard and it's the Tomahawk Arctic. MSI seems to have stolen the white theme quite well with these uh, Arctic line of boards. So we'll whisk through, we'll be as quick as we possibly can. I've taken the board out, it's on a stand next to me, but the rest of the stuff that you get in the box is actually fairly basic. You've just got the uh, IO shield, a few SATA cables, two SATA cables, your SLI bridge, then you get your manuals and stuff. And then the only other really interesting thing is the fact that you get uh, an MSI Dragon badge. If you wanted to put it on your case, I would suggest hiding it somewhere slightly subtle, but bosh, there is the actual board itself. So lots of white and I'm quite happy because uh, when I first saw pictures of this, it wasn't clear whether this was beige and this was white, but I can confirm that you've got white, including white heat sinks, and then the tops are brushed stainless. Uh, and these are actually cut through as well. It's not white printed on top of the stainless. It's actually, it's easier if I zoom you in with my super technical skills. I don't know why my zoom is being, there we go. So you can see it's actually cut out of the stainless so that's all actually quite cool so having a look uh, around the board itself you can see we have a, a few of the pcr expresses on easiest way to look with the pcr expresses is you can see the metal supports on these so they're your 216 slots that are going to be wired into your cpu you need to remember that your cpu has lanes and your uh, chipset has lanes 24 PCI Express lanes on the chipset, which goes into the M.2s. There's another one underneath here, your U.2s. And this PCI Express lane, this PCI Express lane, this PCI Express lane. So they're all on the chipset. These two are 16. So if you get a CPU with uh, enough GPU lanes, that comes off from here as well. And this one can as well. Although you wouldn't really want to be using this for... Um, uh, like triple SLI or anything, it's the, the spacings are just all wrong. So it's complicated, I know, but you do have to look on the block diagram for the board itself. So features around the board, we've got a few fans. There's a nice one up here, which is your system fan, which is a great place to put your rear fan header, wrap the cable around and pop it over here. Then over here, you've got a, a pump fan and then a CPU fan. You can use these both for fans if you want though. You don't necessarily have to put a, um, uh, an OIO pump in there if you don't want to. More fans down the bottom and you've got three in a line down here. I'm just looking to see we don't have any kind of on this axis around this point or anything. Talking about USB though, we've got USB 3 vertical there and you've also got USB 3.1 header. You've got a horizontal USB 3 as well. Thankfully, there are two USB 2s down the bottom because they're always handy now. Also down the bottom, you get a power and a reset button. They may not be very Gucci or anything like that, but it's better to have a button than not have a button. You've got another two SATAs here as well. You can see here that we do have a 110mm compatible um, M.2 port, but there is another one underneath this. So you undo the screw and then the whole heat sink area comes off. There is a thermal pad underneath it as well, so you can get better uh, cooling, uh, sorry, better heat transfer into the actual, and this is metal. And then you can see you've got your second uh, M.2 connector there. I'll be uh, paying attention to the main view on OC3D TV on this to see what sort of temperature drops we get in compared with the, the actual, um, uh, like a normal one, I'll probably run it with it on and off. So you do get a PCI poster in the top right hand corner, which does give you a good indication about what's going on if you're overclocking and things might uh, you know, start freezing and stuff. Also shows temperatures as well that you can look at real quick. I did say about white heat sinks, but something that has been raised about these white heat sinks is that these top parts are bolted to the bottom aluminium part. So the uh, temperatures is gonna be something that I'm gonna be paying attention to with this. This is all plastic cover around this side. So this isn't a heat sink, but it is not, nice to see the white plastic PCI Express, uh, sorry, PCI Express, dear me, DRAM ports. But you've also got the white following through down into the PCI Express down the bottom as well. 
The uh, battery isn't in a silly place, um, although it's not the nicest aesthetic place to have it, at least it's easily accessible when you're overclocking and stuff like that. And then when we come round the back, you've got the uh, BIOS clear button and you've also got BIOS flashback. This is the BIOS flashback header, USB 2 and PS2 on board, USB 3.1 with an A and a C, gigabit ethernet, gold plated audio connectors and you can see that they've spent quite a bit of time with the audio so you've got the uh, Japanese uh, capacitors, audio capacitors there. I can't see what the chip is because it's just underneath here, you can see it there but I'll be sure to have a look at it in the uh, main review. You can go and read more about the stuff that's on board on the OC3D website anyway. So I'll give you a slow pan up so that you can pause if you do want to have a look and pick the board apart. And then the only other thing that I've really got to say about the board as we leave is there are MOSFETs for the CPU on the back of the board as well. So there does seem to be quite a lot of MOSFETs, uh, but I will I'd be asking questions to MSI about the difference between the front and the back and what they are in time for the main review. But anyway, is a YX29 board the sort of thing you're looking to base your system around? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments and don't forget you can come and have a discussion about this because the video will be posted on the OC3D forums and on the OC3D website. So come and join us if you fancy a chat about this product. So for one of the, yeah, oh, yeah I'm just gonna go.